Well, right now I'm watching live TV. I'm gonna switch over here to YouTube, and boom, I'm in YouTube. NetCruiser's back with another 4K TV review. This time, a 43-inch Samsung. This is the new 2017 43MU6300. It's their entry-level 4K HDR TV. It runs Tizen, it has Samsung's latest smart TV platform, and it has some unique features because of it. So, let's get this TV set up. Here's some of the 4K and color marketing features on the box. 4K color drive, 4K HDR Pro, Essential Black Pro, 120 Motion, Smart Hub. Now, it says 120 Motion. This is a 60 Hertz TV. It is not a 120 Hertz TV. It also does not fully support 100% of wide color gamut spec, but it does decode HDR10. Design-wise, it's fairly simplistic. It does have this kind of boomerangy wedge-shaped TV stand, which most Samsungs do. Very small, you know, modern style bezels. It still has all the plastic and stuff on it. We'll get around here and I'll show you some of the back panel. Here's how thick the TV is. It is a thicker TV all the way around from top to bottom. If you saw my Sony TV review, one thing I didn't like about that television was the giant power brick it had. This one, the AC to DC inverter is built into the TV, so it just has a singular AC cable. And uh, it's, it's very simple. Just let me flip the TV around. TV was manufactured April 2017, and like all the televisions that I've showed on my channel so far for these 4K HDR ones, this was again an open box return to Best Buy. All the inputs are on the side, and you have a coax, you have your analog inputs, you have wired LAN, HDMI 1, 2, and 3, digital optical, USB 1 and 2. It's nice that all of the inputs are on the side like this. If you were going to wall mount this on your Visa mount, it's nice to have all the inputs on one side in a slightly recessed area. I do like that design. And like I mentioned, the AC cable is just one standard AC cord. It has this nice little low profile side prongs. The remote control is very modern. It has a nice little curve to it. And the volume up and volume down are rocker buttons. Home, back, play, pause, directional navigation. Bring up a keyboard. Bring up a colors menu of A, B, C, or D for like your special Blu-ray functions. There's a microphone, so the TV does have voice commands, although it's by no means a internet smart assistant. It's just very basic canned commands, so you have to speak directly what the TV wants to hear and it uses IR and Bluetooth, and uh, I actually quite like it. It's very nice, very comfortable. I have the TV in the cabinet, and right now it's just doing the auto scan through our antenna array, and it's just finished. This is the interface it gives you. It auto detects what's plugged into the inputs, but it's detected HDMI incorrectly. HDMI 1 has my Nexus player plugged in, and it thinks it's a receiver. HDMI 2 picked up a PlayStation correctly. All right, the TV just finished its auto scan and it's currently playing audio through the TV speakers so it did not automatically enable arc mode. So that's the next step is get arc working. Something very interesting here about the voice input, I'm changing the text label on a input device and I can just press and hold the mic button and input it. Nexus player. It's, it beats typing it in, that's pretty awesome. It's a Tizen TV and I'm just gonna turn it on right now. One thing that happens when you turn it on and off is it does that little animation, which is, ah, it's a little, it's a gimmick, right? It's, it's kind of annoying, actually. My wife thinks it's quite dumb. The interface is that smart hub down at the bottom that has come up, and it lets you auto-detect all of your inputs and your apps. Your apps go down here, but it also auto-detects your, your devices that are connected, so it knows that this one is a Nexus player. Here's my PlayStation, and here's live TV. The major problems that I've been having with this TV is that it, if it does not auto-detect properly, then you have no control. You have no control over what it sees and what it works with. So my biggest problem has been with the consumer electronics control and the ARC, the audio return channel. Right now, it is connected to a PlayStation and it is connected to a Nexus player. If I switch over to the Nexus player input, about 50% of the time, the consumer electronics control does not work. Samsung calls that ARCnet, 
That's what the Samsung branding of it is. It doesn't work worth a damn. I'm pressing up and down. It, this should allow me to control the device through HDMI. That's the whole point. And it is extremely buggy. So when this happens, you can switch to the input, but you have no control over the device using the television remote. So I would have to use the native remote for this device to control it. My biggest issue with this is related to sound, specifically audio return channel. So when I look at source, it tells me that I have a Nexus player connected and it knows that it's on. It's got the little blue tick. The PlayStation, it knows it's off. HDMI 3 is an unknown. It doesn't know what it is. Now it is wired to my sound receiver right now. If I turn on my sound receiver, which I've just done with my Harmony remote, the TV should auto detect it as a home receiver and send the sound through audio return channel. That does not happen. It is extremely frustrating, this TV, that it doesn't auto detect the devices properly. The only way that I can get this television to detect this device right now would be to totally unplug the power from the TV, wait five or 10 seconds, plug the power of the TV in, turn the receiver on first, then turn the TV on, and then it will detect it as a home theater, and I'll be able to play the sound through my home theater through the, using the audio return channel. But within maybe an hour to a day, it will lose sync of the device, and you'll be screwed again. And then you have to power, power cycle the, the television. That consumer electronics control issue is well known on the support forums, and if you search for Samsung Arc bug, uh, it will come up, because it affects consumer electronics control, and it also affects Arc. And this happens all the way from their base model Tizen TV, all the way up to the top of the line QLED. It's a software problem, and Samsung needs to, to figure out how to give the user more control because when you go into your settings, I have no way of choosing anything. I have no way of saying what this device is. I can give it a name, but that doesn't give it a function. So the biggest problem is that when you go into your settings and I want to change sound. Oh, it picked it up that time. Sound receiver HDMI. So 50% of the time or worse, I wouldn't have that HDMI option. And at this point, the sound should play through HDMI, but I have a feeling that it won't. When I switch to Live Air TV, which should give it some sound, receiver's up at the top of the TV, you can't see it, but it did not work. So right now I just have no sound at all. Even though the TV thinks it's sending out a sound to the HDMI, it just, it's not working. So, terrible, terrible. I went actually, I went to a shop and I talked to a Samsung rep about this and he said, oh yeah, we've heard of these complaints before and uh, there's nothing we can do about it. At least he had nothing he can do about it. Samsung's looking into it, but they've been looking into it for years and have never fixed it. All right, so I've just talked about my two biggest complaints with the TV, which is that the CEC in the arc is extremely buggy and it doesn't work. And so because of that, I'm gonna have to return the TV. Let me just switch over here so we have sound through the so we have sound through the TV. All right, now when I go to live TV, there is a guide button, but check this out. I'll hit guide and while it loads in the information, half the time it gets the time wrong, half the time it plays no information, and a lot of the time, if I scroll to another part of the screen, if I go to down a page where it doesn't have any of the information loaded, you get this interface here where it should load in the program information, but it's not working today because it, it like everything else with this TV, the software is, is pretty junky. If I go down a page, check that out. As soon as I went down a level, it's <laughs> it loses the video feed. How terrible is that? And then again, I'll go down one screen, and now it didn't do it, but a lot of the time when it's, when it's looking for new program information, when it, yeah, right there, whenever it looks for new program information, you can't watch TV. So it totally ruins the point of having an on-screen TV guide. And at this point, the TV guide is not working anyway. So, wow, Samsung, terrible. All right, now let's talk about some of the good things. Something that I really like is how quick it is to load apps. So right now I'm watching live TV. I'm gonna switch over here to YouTube and boom, I'm in YouTube that fast. It's, it's, it keeps programs in memory pretty quick. I'm gonna hit home, gonna jump over to Netflix and we're in Netflix. 
that fast. It's going to do a quick little load here, but it doesn't take that long. So five seconds, I'm in Netflix, I'm going to jump back to YouTube. Now I'm back in YouTube. I can use the voice search on the remote control. You press and hold HDR. Of course, now I'm demoing and it's not working, but it normally works great. HDR on YouTube. This is a real HDR10 video on YouTube. And when you do play an HDR video, I will say this TV it does not have wide color gamut, but it does decode HDR10. And to me, it's the best looking HDR10 out of all the TVs I've tried yet. Wow, my internet is being pretty slow right now, but when you are streaming an HDR video, when you go into your picture mode, you can see there it is recognized as an HDR feed. That's the only indication you get that you're playing a real HDR10 video. So you're seeing this in very low resolution, but the colors are very, very good. Seeing this very pixelated, but point is the HDR video is quite good and it does detect it as HDR mode and it tells you that there's an HDR picture setting. Problem with that, all picture settings have unique isolated settings. So when I go into when I go into the picture settings for standard HDR, these pictures Come on, TV. Well, no, you got to go home settings, picture Picture mode is in natural. You have to go into expert settings. In expert settings, so this would be expert settings that I would be controlling related to HDR. Notice how backlight is at 20. Uh, some of these other settings are usually at their defaults. Now, if I go home, there also there's no quick, I have to go home, home, jump to live TV, which will be an SDR type feed. See how we lost the HDR badge on the natural? So it, it's back into SDR mode. And when I go into settings, expert settings, these settings are usually different. So clean view has been turned on, contrast enhancer is on low, stuff like that. There is a way to adjust your white balance and color tone, but for some reason this is all grayed out right now. Uh, that is odd. Usually white balance is available. So again, the software seems to be having a connection fit right now where it's, it's like showing me half of the HDR settings, but not letting me get at my color settings. Wow, the, it's, this is a really nice TV that's let down by terrible Tizen software. It has potential, it's just, it's just not ready. Uh, or it has way too many bugs. It's, it's all reliant on auto detecting what, is, what the TV's doing, and the auto detection does not work very well at all. I do like the voice control quite a bit. You press and hold the mic button, 42. It is reliant on the internet. So my internet is being a little bit slow right now because I have another computer downloading some updates, but it just changed the channel to channel 42. HDR on YouTube. Now this should switch over to YouTube and search HDR for me. So it switched over to YouTube. It's gonna do the search and it's gonna load up the results. That's pretty cool. Now one thing about the TV remote control is that all the buttons are very clicky. That's navigation, volume up and volume down in particular. The other thing that just reminded me as this red panel pulled up, color accuracy. Getting the color accurate has been a little bit of a, a annoying thing. So right now it is an HDR mode. That's why it looks a little bit better. Movie mode, I've tweaked standard and movie. Every time you tweak a color saving, it's unique to that input and that mode. So if I was to adjust this HDR standard picture expert settings, this would only adjust HDR picture standard for this input for apps. Then if I go out to TV, so if I change my backlight or something and I jump back out to TV, 
then it would lose those settings. So if you want to try and calibrate every single input, that's a nightmare. On the remote control, there is a numbers button, which brings up a number panel. That's how you can do textual inputs for your channels if you don't want to use your voice. There's play pause, but there is no way to pause live TV through this television. One of the things is when you press home button and you're deep into a menu, so let's say you're into your TV settings and you're, you're a couple le levels in here in your settings. There's no good way to get back. There's no cancel button anywhere. So you would have to press home and home again to get it to go away or back 10 times. Also when you're in live TV, you can press the center okay button and it brings up some guide information. Press and hold and it will give you more detailed information about what show is on. When you have the detailed view up, you can't move. So you have to press back once. Now you can scroll up and down channels and it will tell you what's coming on other channels, but it's very inconsistent as well. Most of the time it doesn't work, but you can scroll through into the future and up and down channels in your little guide button there. Home, guide, once again, it's lost in all of its settings. I just want to show you some real world performance. This is what you have to live with. If you want to bring up a TV guide, A, it's not working, and B, I can't watch my show. So the actual full screen guide is pretty terrible and almost useless. It's too bad. You know, Tizen is really quick in some respects. I really like how fast it is. I like the voice integration when it works. Slash 4x4. Slash 4x4 on YouTube. Yeah, stuff like that is cool. One last thing I thought I would mention is related to viewing angles. Now, something in particular, if you are looking for an IPS display on a Samsung TV, there's only one and only TV in the, in the range right now that has it, and that's this one. And it's this one because it's a 43 inch. So this is an IPS display, so the viewing angles will hold up to an extreme angle. It's perfectly watchable at an extreme angle. It looks good. This is the 43 inch MU6300 and it's the anomaly. It's the one and only Samsung TV this generation that has IPS display. All the others are VA, so just be aware of that. At this point, I think I've pretty much covered everything I can cover. Um, if you're, I really cannot recommend this TV. I can't recommend, at this point, I don't recommend any Samsungs at all because of the software problems. Uh, from 2016 or newer because of the Tizen software problems, the consumer electronics control and the audio return channel bugs. Those are industry standard tech that has worked on every other TV I've ever tested except for this one. Awful. Just like hepatitis. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching.